is Dennis Stone, and I live in Kansas City. And for this episode of Trail Mix, I'd like to share with you something that happened to me and a lesson that God taught me along the deer trail. On this particular day I'm describing, it was uh, winter in Kansas City. And this particular day in Kansas City, it was extremely cold. Uh, extremely cold would be uh, saying it lightly. The temperature was below zero. Obviously, the wind chill was below zero, and it was very, very, very cold. And that's a crucial part of my illustration today about God is the, is the influence that the weather had. It was so cold that in our apartment where we lived, we put a blanket up. Uh, on the inside of the kitchen uh, over the door to try to keep the, the wind out. We put another blanket between the kitchen and the living room to try to keep the, the draft out. It was very, very cold. And it was, um, it was so cold that the weatherman was giving uh, warnings about uh, don't go outside. You know, you could get frostbite if you have one little part of your skin that's left uncovered. Um, probably a combination of the weatherman's warning and the idea of a cabin fever. You know you're inside because it's the cold weather and after days and days of that uh, you're, you're wanting to get outside. And probably a little bit of male ego uh, mixed in with all those other two points. I decided it was time to go hunting. Yes, we're going to go hunting in very, very extreme weather. It does not make good sense, but obviously it was going to be a challenge. So on this particular winter day, after deciding to go hunting on these very dangerous conditions, it, as you know, if you've gone outside, those kinds of activities, it takes quite a while to get your clothing ready. And so I had my insulated underclothing. I had my insulated pants. I had my wool socks and my wool hat and my insulated coat and my gloves and my Sorel boots. That is a key. Sorel boots are incredible. My feet have never ever been cold wearing the Sorel boots. They have a, they have a uh, uh, air pocket around them uh, to help hold the heat in. They also have a wool lining and they are incredible and they keep your feet very, very warm. So after about 30 minutes of gathering clothes and getting clothes on, I made my way out the front door and uh, obviously grabbed my bow and my arrow and making my way to the, uh, to the tree stand. I walk out of the front of the house, I take a right, and as soon as I clear uh, the building, I wondered if I hadn't made a mistake and if a combination of the weatherman, the cabin fever, and the male ego was going to get the, uh, the best of me. But I made my way to the tree stand. I should probably say I waddled my way to the tree stand. With all the clothing on, you could hardly walk a straight line. Uh, but I uh, made my way to the tree stand, got up into the tree, swished the snow off the stand, sat there on the tree stand. And another mistake was that the tree stand was facing the northwest, and that was the direction the wind was coming, and it was extremely, extremely cold. So sitting there in the tree stand, uh, noticing uh, God's creation, even though it was cold, it was still beautiful. And not too long after being there, uh, there was a little bird that appeared. I don't mean magically, I mean this bird appeared, flew up, on, landed on the branch there that was kind of close, that was kind of close to me. And those of you that have been uh, outdoorsmen, you will know that, uh, you know, if you watch one creature, sometimes they'll tell you what's, what's going on with the other creature. For example, you might see a crouching rabbit to know that there's a coyote or a hawk nearby, or you might hear a squirrel that uh, might go crazy because maybe there's a deer approaching. Well, this little bird landed on the branch there, kind of close to me, and this bird had an attitude. I don't know what his problem was. But he had a really big attitude. He was squawking. He was carrying on. I mean, this bird was no bigger than a pop can, but he just, he just let me have it. I mean, he was making all kinds of noises. He was jumping up and down the branch. He was like, um, almost like charging me, like flying at me, then going back to his branch once again. So I took a couple swipes at him and tried to chase him off, but it, it just really didn't seem uh, to work. And so this bird... 
uh, he just stayed and stayed and stayed. And I kept wondering what is going on. Is there another? Uh, is there another one of God's creatures uh, close by that he's warning me of? Or does he just have an attitude? Or what is just glad to see me? Or what's the deal with this bird? And then I'm going to have a Dr. Doolittle moment here. I know that birds don't talk to people. But then I'm thinking, maybe the bird is trying to tell me something. Like, for example, maybe he's going to call me a sissy. Or he's going to make fun of me because here I am out here in, quote, his woods. I have on all those all the clothing that I mentioned before, the insulated pants, the insulated coveralls, the jacket, the boots, the Sorel boots. And here is this little bitty bird who's out here in God's creation. And he has nothing but the feathers that God made for him and a little bit of skin that he has. And not only is he going to survive that day, in the woods, but he's also going to survive that winter, obviously, uh, in the woods um, as well. And so this went on with this, with this bird for, for quite a while, uh, where he was chirping and kind of fluttering and flying toward me and, and, and carrying on, and I, finally got him to, and I finally got him to leave. But that encounter with that bird in the woods that day reminded me of a, of a passage of Scripture from Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what, or what you will drink, or about your body. What you will wear is not more important than food, and the body are more important than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your Heavenly Father feeds them. Are you much more valuable than they? Why do you worry? Can't add a single hour to his life. You know, that encounter with the bird that day, um, I know the bird wasn't speaking to me. I know it wasn't a Dr. Doolittle moment, but it surely did remind me of some lessons that I, that I could take back with me uh, at, the end of the, uh, at the end of the day. First of all, uh, that lesson would be that God can uh, take care of his creation, obviously, uh, he took care of, the, of that bird that day in extremely cold weather. Uh, obviously, he didn't have a house, and he didn't have a furnace, and he didn't have other things as well. And um, not only does he take care of that bird, but as it says in Scripture, he takes care of his plants and other creation as well. But aren't we more important than those things that God has created? The Scripture says that, that we are. And I think that's an important lesson to remember as well. And but whatever is it might be causing you and I to worry today, whether it may be uh, like a lack of a steady job, or maybe it might be a health issue, or a relationship issue, or financial issue, whatever it may be, I think we can be encouraged by this passage of scripture that God does love us and He does care for us and that He wants the best for us.